Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Unfiltered. Pastor David, welcome. Thank you, John. Pastor, last night was the first GOP debate, and I was reading that DeSantis was, of course, part of the debate, and that uh, some of the some other of the candidates that were there, and some of the reports were reporting that it was pretty much a bust, and that uh, according to different sources, DeSantis was avoiding being attacked and just wasn't a good turnout. Yet Tucker Carlson has uh, Donald Trump on the show, and the ratings were over 84 million views. Does that have anything to say with the GOP political candidates for our president candidates? I think that these kinds of things are intended to, um, to cause the viewers to have an opportunity to see how the, the various um, uh, contestants, if you will, because it's more like a contest, hmm. um, you know, the candidates can uh, respond to questions that that the average American might have and all, and that's what they're supposed to, to produce is, uh, is a clarity between the candidates as to why I would like this man over that person or this woman over that guy and all of that, of course. So uh, this, isn't, this is early, you know, this is the first debate. You wouldn't really expect an awful lot. And plus, you really wouldn't expect the, the front runner Trump to necessarily be involved in it. He's already spent four years as a president and he already has a, um, you know, a list of accomplishments that he can point to. So I'm not quite sure whether or not this debate needed to include him because he's already in the mind of many people, the front runner, and according to all the polls, he's way out in front of his closest uh, competition, which would be DeSantis. Uh, so from that angle, you wouldn't expect him to be involved in any debates until it's necessary for him to be so. So being on Tucker, which is interesting to hear, because Tucker was fired by Fox, you know, for some things that were allegedly um, uh, incorrect, and thus he was released. It's interesting that he has that great a, a viewership or listenership, you know. Tucker Carlson's very popular in it only shows that. And so I think that Trump being a businessman and having an awareness of things like that probably made the most, uh, uh, the wisest decision mm -hmm. he could make by doing something like that. He gets all of these views and all of these people uh, are listening to him. But frankly, those who hate him will never be uh, open to any ideas he might have and will never give him any credit for the things that he accomplished. So we're looking at, many are looking at others and different options. So the one who I think stands out is going to be the DeSantis. <clears throat> but they have the other contenders, you know, some of them that shouldn't really, I don't think in my opinion, should even be up there in the stage. You know, uh, Christie, for example, is, is basically said from what I understand that he's there to try and derail Trump. <laughs> he doesn't even really seem to believe he has an opportunity or a chance to become the president and he simply wants to attack Trump for whatever reason he might have and then you have the others who are who are new and all of that so this is early it it, it really doesn't matter that much what I'm more interested in is the nonsense that the Democratic Party spews in relation to these things because um, they must honestly believe that Americans have the incapacity to reason. They have to. I mean, when you have surrogates for Biden, even though it's under Biden's name in his, uh, his tweets or whatever he's doing, you know, it says from him, you know, and I know that it's not him who's tweeting anything. He doesn't stay up past nine o'clock, <laughs> you know, so he's not, he's not watching anything. I don't really believe that this man who is called president has any business being it, it holding the office he has. I have, uh, you know, a real disdain for all that he stands for and all that he's done. And he and his uh, special interests, including his son, have really made the, uh, the name of the United States the, the off-scouring of the world. He's brought us into disrepute in a way that no president up to this point, I think, have ever has ever done. So when you have that kind of thing going, when you have Biden who won't who won't debate anybody, 
when you have Biden who doesn't debate making comments about another debate, though it's not him who's making the comments. It just shows you how ridiculous things are. So this is the beginning. They all have their ideas. They're trying to sell their ideas. What this really is is to see who's going to be the nominee for the vice president. That's really mm -hmm. what I think this is. And so, you know, America will give an op will be given opportunity to determine who did they think should be the one second in command, if you will, the vice president, because that person, if Trump wins, is going to be the successor to him. And so that, I think, would be much more interesting, who's going to come in second place and who's going to be appointed or requested. I wouldn't be surprised if Tim Scott isn't the mm -hmm. person. I, I think that Republicans um, <laughs> would do well to have somebody like him. Um, I think DeSantis has uh, done a great job, has done a great job. Florida, um, there are some others who I think probably could bring some fresh ideas and fresh blood into the Republican Party. But I, I, think, we're, I think we're bent on, on just keeping the old people in. You know, uh, and this is probably going to be for another unfiltered, but even looking at the Democratic side, Democrat side and, and uh, the corruption that's going on and even possibly stealing another election. So that'd be, I mean, I don't even want to think about how we would be in another four years under this type of presidency. Uh, it would be difficult. So that'll be another for another unfiltered. But I want to thank you, Pastor, for uh, joining us as you always do. I want to remind you that we have our services at 8.30 and 10.45. Pastor David, you're taking us through. The conversion of Saul. A powerful, powerful study. So we look forward to having you guys come out and look forward to joining us in this study. Invite a friend and, and your family members to come out and join us. Thank you again for joining us today, and God bless you.